Sup bra, what is up with the Canoptic Spider in 9th edition? Is it our best Necron unit? It's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. And if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about Necrons and more, then please subscribe and hit the bell button. Nope, that's really old intro then please subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. Okay, the Canoptic Spider, formerly known as the Tomb Spider. I've had a lot of fun with this unit over the years. I've been playing since third edition. Actually, I learnt my biggest lesson when it comes to tactics with this unit. Back in those days, you could only shoot the closest units, and I used to always put my Tomb Spider, Canoptic Spider, up front. I mean, it was a big creature with lots of wounds, and I wanted to get him into assault. Every turn he died, and then one day I put him at the back, and my buddy said to me, Finally, Nick, you've learned how to place the spider. And that is the key thing here, experience. There's nothing better than experience. So I'm going to share my experience of playing the Tomb Spider, have a close look at this unit in 9th edition, and find out if maybe it is one of our best units in the Codex. Press like for the hat, or at least, press like for having the balls to wear this hat in a video. Necrons are best. Now, the first thing to note here is that the Canoptic Spider has been moved from heavy support into elites. This is the first time we've seen them as an elite slot. But the elite slot is incredibly packed. There's lots and lots of units in the elite slot, which at first you would say, well, it's bad that it's in the elite slot, but actually it's a great advantage. If you look at the battalion detachment, you can have up to six elites, but only three heavy supports. We desperately need those three heavy supports for other things like doomsday arcs and doom stalkers. In ninth edition, the Canoptic Spider just doesn't cut it as a heavy support choice, and it didn't in 8th edition either, which is one of the reasons why you didn't see them on the table in 8th. However, moving them to elites, and with the stats that we've had changed, and with the new missions that we've got on the table, the Canoptic Spider's gone way up the list of good units in the Codex. Coming in at 60 points a model, the stats line hasn't changed too much with the exception that we get two extra wounds, so we're now at six wounds, and we get one extra attack. That's five attacks. They still move their six inches, their weapon skill and ballistic skill stay the same at four, and their strength and toughness stay the same at six. They still have leadership 10 and a three plus save. Ah, gonna get you. <laughs> the automation claws have changed quite a bit. We are now plus two to strength, so we're strength eight as opposed to strength six. We are minus three AP as opposed to minus two AP, and rather than a D3 damage, so that's random, we are a fixed two damage. That's a lot better. Strength eight minus three with a fixed two damage. We can pretty much take on most things if we wish. We've got five attacks, albeit at ballistic skill four. Obviously, I mean weapon skill. Christmas is coming. These things aren't absolutely beast in close combat, but they got a decent stats line, especially for 60 points. That's just 180 points for a unit of three and with six wounds each, that's 18 wounds there at toughness six with a three plus save. I'm really liking these guys. Now for five points, you can take the particle beamer. Having said that, you have to take two of them, so actually it's 10 points, but two beamers. Now the beamers have changed a little bit. We've lost a little bit of... We've lost a little bit of range. We're 18 inches now as opposed to 24. We've also lost a little bit of strength. Strength five as opposed to strength six. However, we've doubled the amount of shots that we've got. Six shots per beamer, that's 12 shots. I can't do this because I haven't got enough fingers. So even though we're ballistic skill four, 12 shots, that's a good amount of shooting just for 
10 points, 30 points if you've got a unit of three. However, just like the other pieces of war gear for the spider, it's on any miniature, so you don't have to take it on all of them. You could just take the guns on one or two of the miniatures, which is really nice, especially if you have a few points left over, where you can then start putting the war gear on your spiders. So for five points you could take a Gloom Prism, giving you a Deny the Witch as if you were a Psyker in your enemy's Psychic Phase. Very useful. Now for five points we can also take the Fabricator Claw Array, which repairs wounds on vehicles. Now this is quite interesting, it's not done in the Command Phase, it's still done at the end of the Movement Phase, so worth noting that. Now the range has increased, it used to be within one inch of a vehicle and now it's within three inches of a vehicle and you can repair that vehicle D3 wounds lost from the previous turn. Now if you had two spiders with arrays on each one, they both can't repair that vehicle. Only one of them can repair it. However, the other spider could repair another vehicle if there was one within range. Man, it's so hot now. Oh. Oh. Okay, so we've got living metal, command protocols and reanimation protocols on the spider. Living metal, awesome. We've got six wounds. As we lose wounds, we can regain one wound in the command phase every turn. Command protocols, as you know, is very situational. I've discussed it loads in previous videos, and I've got a video all about it, which I'll link you up to at the end of this one. We've then got reanimation protocol. Now we've got six wounds. That means to get our RP to work, assuming we don't just take one spider, so if we have a unit of spiders and one spider dies, we've got to roll six dice and get six fives and sixes. However, we've got another very powerful thing that we can do. Actually, it's the most powerful way of using this piece of war gear. A Technomancer in range with Phylactering Hive allows you to bring that spider back once per game with its full wounds. That is a lot of wounds. That's a lot of effort that your opponent would have put in to killing that spider. And then you just bring him back. What can I say? <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I'll be back. We get knocked down, but we get up again. Da -da 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 -da. Hopefully that won't give me a copyright strike. Now one new thing on the spider is it explodes when it dies. It is only on a roll of a 6+, plus, and any unit within 3 inches gets one mortal wound. So not too devastating, but it's a new thing on the spider. Now next up is Scarab Hive, which in your command phase, one destroyed model from each friendly Dynasty Canoptic Scarab Swarm unit within 6 inches of this unit is reanimated. Each unit can only be affected by this ability once per phase. One destroyed model from each friendly Scarab Swarm unit. So if you had three units of Scarab Swarms around this spider, you can actually regain one swarm from each of those units once per phase. That is awesome. Now, Canoptic Spiders and Scarab Swarms go hand in hand. They're great together. I talked about Scarab Swarms in my previous video, and we talked about the self-destruction stratagem, killing your Scarab Swarm and then bringing it back with the Canoptic Spider in the next turn. Really, really awesome. However, you don't have to take Scarabs and Spiders together in the same army. Scarab... <clears throat> However, you don't have to take Scarab Swarms when you're using your spiders. And that's the great thing about spiders. Once again, we can have different unit sizes between one and three, and that really changes the tactical options and abilities of these things. I've been using Canoptic Spiders, 
as a troops choice in my assault list. Now just to clarify, when I say as a troops choice, of course I mean use them like a troops choice. So maybe you've got a vanguard detachment or a spearhead detachment and you're not taking troops because you want to take lots of other goodies from the codex. That's what I mean. So I'd actually use my spiders like troops. I'd actually put them on objectives, etc. That's what I mean. I make them objective secure and I put them behind a piece of terrain on an objective at the back of the field. And they just sit there. If someone deep strikes and attacks them, well, I've got guns on them and I've also got well, a good amount of attacks and wounds and toughness to actually cope with a bit of an assault. Now, if the spider dies, that's fine because if a unit is attacking me that's going to kill the spider, then regardless of what I had on the objective, whether that would be 10 immortals, 5 immortals, some warriors, etc., well, the attacking unit is probably going to take them out as well. So having a 60 point troops objective secure unit on that objective at the back of the field, that's a great way to use a spider. However, a unit of three pushing forward, albeit only six inches, but potentially you could advance at the same time and you've got an assault weapon, so you could advance and still shoot at minus one ballistic skill if you wanted to. But those guys pushing forward, that's a much bigger threat bubble and is going to bring a lot of attention on itself. Again, objective secure, potentially giving a six inch pre-game move to really push them forward. Get on that midfield objective and just sit there. Lots of wounds, lots of toughness. And also if somebody assaults them, well, strength eight, minus three AP and two damage. Now, of course, you could put the spiders in the Novok Dynasty, giving you that extra one inch on your charge roll and the extra minus one AP on the turn that you assault. You could use the Blood Rite Stratagem, giving you an extra one attack. A lot of options for the spider, and that's really what I like about them. Now, there is no dedicated stratagem for the Canoptic Spider. However, there is one there for the Technomancer, which... I think this works, but I need you to confirm it for me, so if you actually know, let me know in the comments box below. But the Death Arise gives the Technomancer the ability to do Rites of Reanimation one additional time for one CP. Now I'm assuming if you're using the Arcana ability, the Hive, to reanimate, to bring back a Canoptic creature once per battle, but then you use the command point to do that twice, that means you can bring back two spiders. That's what I'm thinking, but I'm a little bit unsure of whether you can actually do that. Let me know in the comments box below. Canoptic spiders aren't going to shoot your opponent off of the table. They're not going to destroy them in close combat. However, for the points, they are very survivable. They can give your opponent a lot of problems and they're very good at taking mission objectives. For me, spiders, canoptic spiders, one of the best units in the codex. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments box below. Also, if you did notice, I'm using a different lens for this video. And if you think it looks better, then let me know that in the comments box as well. Now, if you found this video useful, here is a playlist of all of my other 9th edition Necron videos. And here is the video all about command protocols. Uh -huh.